What's up everybody? Welcome to a Greg Way. Every Wednesday and Friday here on Greg Way, you submit a question, I give you this answer in this crazy ass video, and hopefully you like it just a little bit. Enough to subscribe, maybe like and share it with your friends. Uh, today's question comes from Mike Ziering. Mike Ziering writes in and says, Greg, blah, 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 some bullshit about something, and then tell the story about meeting Dan Aykroyd, the Ghostbuster stories. Dan Aykroyd. Uh, if you remember uh, a few Gregways ago, you asked me for my favorite IGN memories, and one of the ones I listed was the Dan Aykroyd t-shirt story, this being the t-shirt, 70, I demand a recount, and I actually held back because I realized that could be a video on its own, and so rather than just give away the clicks, I would tell the story again here in this thing. So let's take you back. There's this video game coming out called Ghostbusters the Video Game. You probably don't remember it because you didn't buy enough of it for there to be a sequel, so fuck you for that. But I go to New York City. They send me out there to see the game, preview the game, but more importantly, to meet the man himself, Dan Aykroyd, Dr. Ray Stance from the Ghostbusters. Um, and so knowing that was about to happen, I grabbed my Ghostbusters jumpsuit that I have. Movie, movie, it's movie accurate. I got, I got the patch from Hollywood. I got the Miller patch from Hollywood. It looks dynamite. Uh, and then I grabbed my movie accurate proton pack. And then I grabbed, you know, the other stuff I wear. Like I, I wear like the old Kenner toy, PKE meter, and Ghost Trap and stuff like that. I put all this into a bag, I fly out to New York City, super stoked to meet one of my idols, Dan Aykroyd, to talk about Ghostbusters, my favorite movie of all time. So I get there, I check in at this hotel, the W, you might have heard of it, <laughs> it's a big deal. And uh, I, I check in there, and I'm, I go to upstairs, and I'm so excited, it's like, you know, I've, it's Thursday night or something, it's already, it's probably already Friday morning, it's after midnight, and I'm like, I'm gonna go to bed, I'm gonna wake up, and I have a 9 o'clock call time, because what we're gonna do, rather than just go interview Dan, is that we're gonna run around all the Ghostbusters locations in New York, we're gonna go to the firehouse, we're gonna go to the public library, we're gonna go then meet Dan here, and think, is we're gonna do all this different stuff, have a great time. Portella, come here, what are you doing? So it's 9 o'clock call time. I'm super excited. It's already midnight the night before I try to go to bed. I can't sleep. I get back up. I'm, I'm so stoked that I'm finally going to, I'm in New York City for a Ghostbusters event. I'm going to meet Dan Aykroyd. I, I, I decided, you know, screw it. I'll unpack everything right now because I'm already awake longer than I want to be so that when I wake up in the morning, I'll be able just to shower, throw on the get up, meet my cameraman, run around New York City. And so I lay everything out and I realize I did not pack a black t-shirt. Now, I will be goddamned if I'm going to go meet Dan Aykroyd about Ghostbusters and have a blue t-shirt on underneath my Ghostbusters jumpsuit. Everybody knows Ghostbusters wear black t-shirts under their jumpsuits. It's, it's, it's canon. There's something you can't. So anyways, now it's like 1230. I call to the front desk of the W and I'm like, bro, do you guys sell t-shirts here? I forgot this t-shirt. I need a black t-shirt. I'm going to meet Dan. I tell him the whole story and I can't sleep and proton packs and stuff. He's like, I, we do not sell t-shirts here right now, but it's New York. Somebody has to be open. So I hang up on them open up the computer, I yelp about, looking for a Walgreens, found a CVS and a Walgreens, I'm like, great, I will go there. About that time, knock at the door. I open the door, it's the guy from the W front desk, and he goes, your story, you know, my, you tell me your story, it touched me, so I went to my car and I got you this, and he hands me a black polo shirt, and I go, this is actually more inaccurate than the blue t-shirt I have, but thank you for trying, that means a lot. Shut the door, I run down the streets, it's you know, now 12.30, 1 o'clock, I run out into the streets of Manhattan, I find this Walgreens, go in, no t-shirts. Find the CVS, no t-shirts. I'm looking around, it's like I'm by Times Square. I'm expecting there to be like the all night t-shirt shop, you sit there never sleeps. Can't find one, finally I'm like, fuck it, I will go to bed, I will wake up in the morning, I'll set my alarm even earlier, I'll wake up and I'll run through the streets of New York trying to find a black t-shirt. Nine o'clock's the call time, I set the alarm for like 7.30, shower, get ready. Then I run out into the streets trying to find it. Can't find anything, anywhere. Nobody's selling t-shirts. Now the W does have a gift shop, also not open, that was selling black t-shirts, so I don't understand why they couldn't have opened it for me the night before, but whatever, still not open now, can't help me at all. Finally, I find a Hallmark store, and for some reason New York runs weird hours, so rather than opening at nine, they open at 8.45. So I line up outside of this Hallmark store, just me, so not much of a line. Door opens, I run inside, they have t-shirts, I run to the aisle, and there are two t-shirts that are black. One, what happens in New York City stays in New York City. And I'm like, that's too cliche. Everybody knows that's Vegas, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna support them riding the coattails of Vegas. Two, this shirt, 70 I demand a recount. Now, the shirt is right next to 40 over the hill, 50 and loving it. I'm wearing your grandfather's t-shirt. This is a joke shirt you would buy your grandfather on his 70th birthday to be like, Man, Grandpa, you sure do love being 70. So I buy it, you know, again, didn't matter. Buy it, run back, put on my Ghostbuster jumpsuit, run around, film all the stuff in New York City, then meet Dan Aykroyd. He gives me a bottle of that Crystal Head vodka. Dynamite young man, that Dan Aykroyd. He's got a future in this business. 
talk to him though. Uh, you know, it's great. I had the shirt. It all came together. Of course, at the event, they gave me a Ghostbusters shirt that was black, and I was like, motherfucker, could have done with this last night, but there's nothing I could do about it. Now, the funny thread, the bow on the Dan Aykroyd story, of course, is that I knew that this was a great shirt then. This shirt now had a purpose, so that when I wore it, I always had a story. So when pe I knew people were going to ask, what does that shirt mean? And I get to launch in this great story about, you know, Dan Aykroyd running around New York and the guy with the polo shirt. And so me and my friend Damon Hatfield, you know, my hetero life mate, we were going to a party once where we knew no one and we were on the bus and he, I was wearing the shirt for the first time. He goes, what's that shirt? And I'm like, it's the best conversation starter you'll ever see. So I tell him the whole story. He's like, that's a great story. And I'm like, I know. And the best part is we're going to a party where no one knows us. I'm going to wear the shirt. Everyone is going to ask me and we're going to be the coolest people at this party. Not one motherfucking person at that party asked me for what the shirt meant. So thank you, Mike, for writing in asking me about this shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think of this shirt? <laughs> it's seen better days, but I still love it. Also, what other questions do you have for me? Leave them in the comments below or feel free to throw... Keep going, don't matter. Feel free to throw them at me on Twitter. Then you can be part of the next Gregway. I post them every Wednesday and Friday, so keep coming on back, y'all.